my countrymen, you who constitute the great body of the people, who labour hard for your daily bread, and imagine you have neither time nor talent for a form of public abuses. Rouse yourselves into a just sense of your own importance and dignity. Here is a great and glorious reformation in hand, which cannot be accomplished without your assistance. There are, in the West Indies, in the British Dominions, 800,000 of your fellow creatures and fellow subjects suffering under the barbarous and shameful oppression of slavery. You can set them at liberty. All of you may not know what it is to be a slave. A West Indian or British slave is distinguished from his master by a black skin and is considered and treated by him not as a human being, but as a beast of burden, whom he buys and sells like cattle in the market, whom he drives and keeps to labour all year round with a cart whip, applied without mercy and without distinction upon the trembling bodies of women and girls as well as men. Few slaves are to be seen of either sex without the shocking marks of this terrible instrument of punishment upon their bodies. Moreover, their purchases frequently disfigure them with brand marks stamped upon their flesh with hot irons. For all their hard labour, shameful degradation and bitter suffering, they receive no wages, not even food enough to keep body and soul together. And now, my countrymen and countrywomen, will you unfeelingly turn aside and not care for these things? Will you not only do nothing to deliver the poor slave out of the hands of these merciless tyrants, but will you also encourage and bribe them to keep him in slavery? This you are all now doing by purchasing West India sugar. It is in the cultivation of sugar that the slaves endure the most cruel oppression. A French writer observed that he never could look on West India sugar without conceiving it stained with human blood. And will you continue to purchase this West India sugar now you know at what a dreadful price it is obtained? Will you continue to purchase West India sugar when told, on good authority, that refusing to purchase it is the only means now in our power of putting an end to British slavery? All other means have been tried to no purpose. The greatest and best men in the country have been trying in vain to put an end to it. Public meetings have been held all over England and petitions without end sent to Parliament to no purpose. Is it not then a great and glorious work to which you are invited? Would it not be great and glorious to set 800,000 of your fellow creatures at liberty? Would it not be great and glorious to do that which the wisest and best men in the nation have been labouring to accomplish in vain?